Rightio, here we have the uh, Chrysler 360, well, not 360, the 408. We've got a only 20 degrees advance in it at the moment, so we're just going to do a test, sort of a run on it, and we're going to see what it makes at only 20 degrees. We've been driving around now for a bit over a year at 20 degrees. So, um, just before we start the tune on it, because we haven't tuned, tuned it since it was on the dyno, um, we just had a very soft tune on it just to run it in and drive it around and enjoy it. Um, now it's time to put a bit of power into it and see how we go. done is we've done a run on the dyno. Uh, the first run it was probably a little bit cold and it broke down a little bit so we only made 300 horsepower but it was breaking down really bad like really lean. Um, we got a bit of engine temperature into it, did another back-to-back -back run and it made 318 horsepower but it was still almost 15 to 1 air fuel ratio so we figured that it, we need to uh, richen the needles in the secondaries. So we've done that now, and now we're about to do another run. Well, we put a bit of extra fuel in it and uh, we got it down to 12.9 uh, to 1. So it is better. It picked up 25 horsepower. So we decided that we'd start to do a, a timing change. And it's when, when I uh, started to do a timing chain, change that I realized that we've actually only got 10 degrees of timing in, to, in a table. So um, that's, that's not enough. So. We've actually now got 20, so we're going to try it at 20 and uh, see how we go from there. changes and tuning. Uh, one of the things we had to do uh, to start off with is try and get the car a little bit richer. We did two needle changes um, and uh, we had a gain of 25 horsepower, which was pretty good. The second needle change that we made got us into the low 12s with the air fuel ratio under, under full throttle, so we were very happy with that. Um, then we did um, a timing change. Now, I thought, as I discussed earlier, that I had 20 degrees of timing in this engine. But obviously, I didn't. I had 10 degrees. It wasn't until I checked it that I actually had 10 degrees when I, when I took the calculations off my uh, MSD programmable curve. But anyway, realized I had 10 degrees, so I added instantly another 10 degrees, and wow, banged on another 70 horsepower, just like that. So, with all the changes and the, the we finished with uh, an extra horsepower of 419 horsepower and 491 foot pounds of torque to the rear hubs so that's a big change that's a change from 318 horsepower to and 376 foot pounds of torque so that's basically 
a hundred extra horsepower uh, and about a hundred and ten hundred and something of uh, foot pounds so that's pretty good now the key to this is when I first started tuning the car I thought yeah I, I thought I mistaken the sound of detonation which I thought was detonation but no it was uh, um, it was detonation or backfiring minor backfiring through the uh, carburetor that sounded like detonation echoing off the big factory air cleaner so but as you can see this is it's not a bad result for a cast iron engine with a cast iron intake manifold um, cast iron heads um, a lot of work obviously done to the engine it's 408 cubic inches um, it's got an 800 quarter jet carby on it um, I prefer quarter jets because they give you good foot pounds on the street and foot pounds are what move a good heavy car. This car weighs a little over 1600 kilograms. So it's not a light car as such. So we want this thing to move all right. And hopefully next time when I pull up beside that bi-turbo Mercedes, I should uh, possibly do a better number. No, 